Or talk about an old shoe. We put on the old shoes again today. Yeah. For chapter number seven at the Clinton County Historical Museum at 3 Cumberland Avenue with our friend Ken Ray. We are delighted to be back with you, Kenneth. It's nice to have you back. It's a cool day in the spring, 2005, April 21st. Oh, uh, after a couple of weeks of wonderful weather, we had a nice rain and the grass is turning green and the birds are out and the flowers are out and hopefully people will be out supporting the Clinton County Historical Association and Museum. Right, at 3 Cumberland Avenue, 5610340. Get that telephone number out. Get we, it in you there. know that old saying, we get cards and letters? You've been getting them, haven't you? Oh yeah, lots of calls. People are responding to the old photographs. They call exactly. me late at night, early in the morning, send me emails. But that's the whole idea. I get them too. Get yeah. people interested. Right. We had, just uh, for those who haven't been seeing all the other previous chapters, haven't been seeing them, we started with piles and piles of photographs that came from the liquor board that they were going to throw away, pictures of the insides and exteriors of buildings all over Clinton County where beer and liquor were sold exactly. for years and years and years. These were mostly unmarked, unidentified photographs. Right. And hopefully, if we both live long enough, we'll know where almost every one. And people chide me in their emails and tell, Gordy, don't you know that was my grandmother's place? Or don't, and you've had the same kind of thing, right? Exactly, yeah. People were in this week looking for photographs of their grandmother's restaurant, bar room, whatever. So I make a copy and ask them to become a member and I'll trade it. <laughs> he's, a, he's a good marketing a specialist. <laughs> that's a wonderful idea. Sure, that's you it. become a member. That's the whole point. It's a cheap picture. You know, when I walked in, I saw boxes of what apparently was your latest newsletter, newsletter. Clinton County Historical Association and Museum North Country notes. notes. And here it is. And what's special about this spe this one? Well, it's our summer copy and it gives a little synopsis of what we're doing and where we're going up on the air base. A uh, photo of the building that we'll be occupying. The four chimney building and as we, as we call building. it. I just want to show mm -hmm. a picture of that to our viewers in case they're not certain because you know we have got them worked up from time to time about the absolute necessity of moving the Clinton County Museum from 3 Cumberland Avenue out there in the base just because there isn't enough space. We here. need to spread out, that's right. So this could happen by spring. Oh, I think the move is probably scheduled for late this summer. Wouldn't that be nice? And then we will be uh, pretty well set up through the winter and open, have a grand spring opening. So this is uh, summer 2005, number 396, just for those people in the right. distant future who might watch this program saying, that isn't the one I just got in the mail. These all go out as mailings? They do. They will be going out next week. Yeah, 620 uh, newsletters that I uh, prepare, fold, and label. And <laughs> You've got it all done in almost one day. You're going to well, work yourself right out of a job. Kenneth. I had a good volunteer, though, yesterday. I had one of the ladies from my uh, apartment building, Mrs. Favreau. Oh, Joyce yeah. Favreau oh, spent yeah. the entire day helping me fold and seal. And, Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Spindle and mutilate. Yeah, do not spindle and mutilate bends. Right, but uh, we but, did a good job. But anyway, yeah. it's a, it's a, it keeps people up to date. And, and there is an opportunity for North Country people who are interested, as we are, in history to become directly involved by joining. Exactly. It's really simple, isn't it? It's such a simple thing. And plus, once they got in here, they'd be hooked to come back again and again. Like you did almost, how many, like 11 years? 11 years ago. Ken has been working with the Clinton County Historical Museum for a long, long time. And it's uh, he, and he's given a lot of blood, sweat, toil, and tears, but it's been a rewarding, personally oh, yeah, rewarding great. thing for you. Oh, my. It's like a new life. It is. Because you don't know what was here. It's so easy to become passionate about history, especially of your mm -hmm. area, 
uh, not only of your family and your area way up where you were from, but other areas right. as well. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. this and is, the changes that have taken place. I just, looking through this uh, newsletter, and there's a nice program will be coming up in June, for those people who will be seeing um, this before then, for L M Lorraine McIntosh about what's going up on in Dannemore and Lion Mountain, right. a lot of historical She's stuff. She's a historian. And, we'll be giving a, a talk on Monday, June 6th at the Government Center, 7 o'clock. That's neat stuff. That Refreshments. The history of that area is so speak. rich, isn't right. it? Right. And it's interesting. Yeah. We Very love it. interesting. We love it. And some new, just inside, one, one last note, you've got some great new paintings. Yeah. One of the real reasons I want to make sure that this museum moves is so you can display... The artwork. The artwork. That we have. These are the weavers from, uh, well, they were brought in by the Weaver family from Willsboro. These, this gentleman and his wife, Susan, lived in Schuyler Falls. And that painting was done in the middle 1800s. <laughs> Isn't it? And they just donated them. And you've looked them up and found that the painter, who the painter was, and the fact that they're nice, valuable paintings. Oh, very valuable. Wonderful to yeah. add to the... They were a little musty, a little collection. dusty, but I uh, had taken a course in cleaning canvas paintings, and uh, I cleaned them up, and they looked like new. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. And how old are they? 1700s? Uh, 18, 18, middle 1800s, yeah. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Just to let people know that this is not a stagnant operation. This is a, a very vital, vibrant organization. Very quiet building from outside, but a lot going on inside. A lot going on. Uh, just to finish my earlier thought about the responses we get from people. I get many, but I always forget to bring them here when I see you. <laughs> But I, brought, I grabbed a couple right off the top, and one was from my dear friend Sal Riggi. Uh, we've been to his home and interviewed him. He's a wonderful bird carver and carves things, and he's a great artist. But let me, Sal wouldn't mind if I just read this because it refers to some of the paint, some of the pictures that we had. Right. Boy, talk about reminiscing, he says. I can identify a few of the places you were showing, and he, he numbered them. This, you know he's a former teacher. He's done everything very nicely. The Swanky Inn, located on McKinley <laughs> Avenue, later called Brody's. Yes, we're familiar with that. Swanky was owned by my uncle's family. And see, there's always a, a personal connection. family connection. Charlie was Charlie Ward's on U.S. Avenue, where the dry dock is today. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Pals, located on the corner of Margaret and Miller Streets, later known as the Rainbow. These places all have direct connections with parts of my misspent youth. <laughs> <laughs> the Southern, oh, we've had a lot of people comment on the Southern. Located beyond Clinton Community College Entry Gate on Route 9, later known as the 13 Morgans. Cadillac Club. Auto Inn. Yeah. Beaucaire Grocery on Elizabeth Street. Bought candy there every time we went to the old base theater as kids. Isn't that beautiful? The townhouse next door to Charlie's on U.S. Avenue. Arch Grill on Montcalm Avenue near the new condo pharmacy. Molly's, I believe, was located in the block as the same uh, block as the dry dock at opposite end. It was a newsstand. The trading post, like you said, was across from the beach entrance east of Gus's Red Hots. Pete's Restaurant on the southeast corner of Margaret and Elm Street. I work for the Greek owner, he says. <laughs> uh, he says, there are a few others I recognize, but my memory was taxed remembering the above. It's, isn't it great just to hear from these people and to know that our program affected them personally because they worked there, their relatives worked there. To it. And Jan our good friend Janet Downs from Peru Talked about Ken and Dr. John. Mm -hmm. And I think we almost had a team going there, don't you? Wasn't there right. a certain chemistry involved in that day? People said, where's John? Bring him back. Where's the doctor? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> then my son Dale had a whole different perspective. Boy, he knows his cars because Dale and I talk cars all the time. Right. Okay, and she wrote in great letters. This is embarrassing, but I will read it anyway. Great show! Exclamation point. 
You didn't know Derna's in our Sable Forks? Does the White Elephant or Red Bandana ring a bell? Those were the last two names. S. Reed store in the Dajnaw Road behind Glenwood Grocery at Dead Man's Curve on Route 22. They lived in the back of the store. The building's still there. Burnell's Grill on the Lapis Mills Road. Now the little pizza shop. We knew that. Our son Kevin lives in what was Minor Store in Keysville. It was turned into a house. He's been looking for a picture of it as the store. So I'll contact Ken and see if he can make She did. She was here this week, and uh, she has a copy. I sick him on you, Kenneth. She has a copy of it now. And the last line is beautiful, and it says it all. This old stuff is such fun. Wish I had the time to volunteer like Ken does. She says she's going to come and help us. Yeah. She was yep. in this week. So keep Maybe those cards wait. and letters yeah. coming in. If you recognize any of those pictures you've seen or those you will see, let Ken know, as if we haven't piled enough work on him over the last 11 years. But it is fun. It is nice to know that you're touching somebody's life out there mm -hmm. and that we're bringing these people together for the benefit of us all, right? It's History true. is where it's at. Yeah. What have you got for us today? I can't yeah. wait to get involved here. Some of these are, are very old and probably not clear or are uh, good to uh, film but we're going to stop for one second and check our pictures just before we do i want to mention that it wasn't on this fo uh, program but another we wondered where the eagle went from the officers club in the base when they tore it down guy called her I, he said i got it he was a little guilty he said do you want it back i said no i don't have it. i said what are you going to do with it well he says i'm restoring it and i'm going to put it on my garage he says i'll tell you come on over when it's done it'll it's like a big four foot eagle that was on the officer's club yeah. uh, we've made him feel guilty but he didn't steal it he was given to him when they tore the place down mm -hmm. and somebody else uh oh well, i was going to bring a couple of pictures over of a wonderful old home on margaret street the homestead that belonged to uh, Marie McGrath's grandparents, I believe. She gave me a copy of the old Plattsburgh Traction Company book. I wrote a column about it. Mm -hmm. And as I normally do, I run off half-cocked, and half the information I have is not quite correct, but people are very careful to make it right. I just pulled that book yesterday and refreshed a lot of the information that's oh, in Oh, I love it. And I, I was a little bit wrong because I had some tokens, which I will bring out of my pocket, <laughs> And Calvin gets two of them, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. What? And there's the token that says Plattsburgh Coach Lines Incorporated on one side and Good for One Fair on the other side, which I thought originally, we all did, was uh, part of um, a tokens for the Plattsburgh Traction Company, the Trolley Company, uh, which operated in, until the 19, late 1920s in Plattsburgh. Well, they weren't. They're, these were bus tokens, brass bus tokens. And I'm going to write another column, uh, making, correcting my mistakes. I'm the first one to admit that I had the history wrong. But there was a bus company called Plattsburgh Coach Line, started by Leo Nash, who had the bowling, bowling alley down there on River Street, now Durkee Street in Plattsburgh. And those were the tokens for the bus line. You said you, you might have some wooden tokens that they might have used at one point on the trolleys. On the trolleys. Mm-hmm upstairs uh, in one of the I know they boxes. sold tickets and I read in that Plattsburgh Traction Company mm -hmm. book that Marie McGrath let me borrow that they would have tickets and you could get a combination 25 cents for a ride round trip ride uh, on the trolley and then a ball game or some show on the bluff or whatever maps in there too in that book that shows the yes route. The, yeah the routes and they added one route at a time and it <coughs> was like 6.2 miles long the whole mm -hmm. loop that it ran and I had Marie McGrath and, and Marie Beamer and um, and Clyde Lewis's uh, wife who, you know, roughly the same age, grew up together and used to ride on the trolley and how it would stop in front of the house on Broad Street and they'd get in and for a small amount of money would make the trip and that was a big adventure. And mm -hmm. uh, we've had other people tell us how their parents would give them a dollar and they'd get on the trolley and ride up and down and spend the, spend the whole day in Plattsburgh for a dollar. Mm -hmm. Downtown. Now, nowadays, you can't even get out of your driveway for <laughs> a, a buck would give me one gulp for the gas, right? All right. Railroads, a huge part These uh, photographs are not 
their catalog, but not in sequence. So you'll see a picture, various pictures over different times. Now, what is this picture? A picture of a, an, a railroad accident near Ellenburg Depot in 1895. Looks like a heck of a mess to clean up there, doesn't yeah. it, Kenneth? It's called the Augensburg and Lake Champlain line. Well, we can see the initials <clears throat> right on the car, can't we? Mm -hmm. um, interestingly enough, we've done several shows on railroads. I have no great memory of the railroads and how they all came together, but they're so much a part of the history. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shaughnessy's books on how many books has he written on railroads? Just two, I think. The two large books. We uh, interviewed him at great length. Of course, we've interviewed the Clinton County historian Addie Shields and others about railroads. So that's that's a real big part of the North Country history. Oh, it's a picture of a house on Court Street. I think that's the house where Dr. Nicholas Van Leeuwen and his family lived, on the corner of Court and what's that Short Street. Does it still is it still there? The house think? still exists. It still exists. But <clears throat> of course, lots of changes. I wish I brought those pictures from Marie McGrath because the pictures, I think she said of her grandparents or great-grandparents, grandparents, I think, somewhere down on Margaret Street where near where Bouillet's Bakery would be today. And it's just, some of those homes were just absolutely beautiful. Look at the porch. Now porches mm -hmm. are coming back. That's right. kind of a nice thing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So some of these are identified and some are not, is that what you're uh, telling me? Most are, but they're not in sequence. They're just, they haven't been, uh, they're no cataloged, fun. but not. No fun being uh, in sequence. In uh, sequence, I've that's seen, a plat. I've seen a copy of this picture mm -hmm. before. William Platt. The Platt name, of course, so familiar to, to North Country people. And that would be, you. Is that his signature or somebody else's, I wonder? I, I don't think somebody know. Else must I think been. someone else wrote that. That's that, This is actually a photograph of a painting, it says here. Yes, it is. Okay. This is a, uh, it's a document to one of the plats, appointing the plat as an ensign of the first company militia of Huntington, Suffolk County, 1758. Oh, isn't that marvelous in, in blue? Somebody took these pictures. You don't have the actual document here, though, right? I you think don't? we do. You in think our, you do? In our document room. Uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't be handling it quite as freely as we, am, no. as we are right now. And that's for Zephaniah Platt, Jr. This is another one uh, appointing uh, Zephaniah Platt, a colonel of the regiment, October 19th, 1779. That's Those, another good point while we're here. You have so many wonderful old doctors, mm -hmm. and, or I mean documents. And this says on the back, photo from original by H.K. Averill, Averill. Jr. Mm -hmm. And we've talked an awful lot about H.K. Averill and right. H.K. Averill Jr. on this program. Well, now we have a baseball team, but I don't know of the identification, but the Fulquet building is in the background. Uh, that would be down where the uh, part, railroad station is. Right across from the D&H railroad station on Bridge Street in Plattsburgh. Um, our modern viewers can drive down there and take a look at what's left of the building. Actually, part of that building it's still exists. Apartment building. It's been what I would say uh, truncated considerably over the years, so it's not nearly as tall as it was and as large as it was, but it was used by a business for, for a long, long time. That's a motley crew. <laughs> and I'm sure I don't recognize the logos. Kind of a neat uniforms, though, huh? Mm hmm. Strange looking bats, aren't they? They look like they look like much heavier bats and of course I'm a little giddy today because the Yankees had a good game last night against Toronto. I like it when they score twelve runs. There's no time date on this, but it's uh, probably eighteen hundreds, parade passing the courthouse. You know, it was interesting because Marie McGrath, when I was standing in her living room and she was showing me pictures of the old buildings and old uh, homes, 
they were almost always hung with bunting mm -hmm. and with the red, white, and blue flags and so on, because many of these things, pictures were taken during significant occasions. She said, I wonder what that one would be. And I said, well, maybe it's the centennial of the Battle of Plattsburgh, which would have been September 11th, 1914, right? And it's, there was a huge celebration in town here for those mm -hmm. people to say we didn't ever celebrate the Battle of Plattsburgh before. Now this one I'm looking at, boy, there's, there's a lot of, those are trolley wires. And the trolley wires are still there. See the trolley wires? And apparently some restoration going on uh, at City the City Hall building. At the courthouse. Great, great shots. And we don't have any <coughs> clue as to what year it was. The track is running right down there. There's us. the track as if, and the, and the brick. Mm-hmm. Brick paved. Margaret Street was brick paved at one time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, interesting, because all of that is mentioned in that book, The Plattsburgh Traction Company. I don't know if she has copies of it left for sale at the uh, Cornerstone Bookstore, but co every once in a while a copy turns up for sale. Marie Beamer, who told me, yes, I remember when we first sold those in our, in our bookstore, Beamer's, Beamer's downtown, you know. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. I just got it flipped over. <laughs> this, I we have no idea, but it came to us with some photographs. It should be from the area, I'm sure. Oh, well, I should show it to the people now that you and I have taken a look at it. Isn't that a unique yeah, shirt? It almost looks uh, European in a way. Uh, and it does ring some kind of a bell with me, but those bells are so far back in the cobwebs of my mind that I have no clue. These are dirt roads, mm -hmm. uh, and I would hope that we could identify this because that's very, very nice. It looks almost like somebody was cutting into that picture with a razor mm -hmm. blade trying to trim something. <laughs> Isn't that a neat photograph? But the architecture of the building. Just really nice, and that, it's, we believe it's from Clinton County somewhere, don't we? Mm -hmm. I would guess. <clears throat> this is just a photograph. It was, it was taken by uh, Photoshop. Plattsburgh, oh, Baldwin. So we've, we've given them lots of credit uh, before. Plattsburgh people. But sometimes we get boxes of photographs from families and there's no identification. They just leave them at the door. Not only is it wonderful to identify what people were wearing whenever this was in the maybe the late 1800s, early 1900s, but to think that these are somebody's grandparents or great-grandparents mm -hmm. or something who might be watching the show today, and it's just possible mm -hmm. that some family has a copy of that photograph and would like to let us know who those Many of are. these are unknown, like ice harvesting, even though it was Plattsburgh, taken Plattsburgh uh, photographer. Well, this was a huge part of commerce here in the North Country, the harvesting of ice before the advent of uh, refrigerators and ice machines. Who was telling us that they're... Oh, it was Francis Fillion, and he and I were talking, you know, he owns the Fillion block down here in what's now the Bargainer, and he had a restaurant mm -hmm. and bar downstairs, and he's the one that gave us the those uh, tokens. But he was saying that one of his relatives, uh, I've forgotten whether it was his father, uncle, or whoever, had the first ice machine, big ice machine, in town, in a, in a restaurant, probably in Phil Young's mm -hmm. restaurant, and people were lined up to come and see the ice machine. Isn't that amazing? People never saw anything. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because I'm sure in your youth, and certainly in my youth, the ice man would come with a horse and wagon and with a chunks of ice and we'd beg them for chips of ice in the hot summertime and chip off. I don't think so. we had ice in Moore's Forks. We had a crock in the basement or the cellar, right on the cellar bottom, and the bottom was always very cool, and that's where my mother kept the butter and various things covered over with a rock on the top. There were ways, there were ways that modern people have no clue for our ancestors to preserve things. Oh, yes. You know, to, to, for smoking the meats and salting the meats and keeping the butter cold and the eggs, they could preserve eggs for oh, yeah. long periods of time. We would be at a complete loss if somebody a, pulled the plug on the refrigerator, wouldn't we? Yeah. 
That's amazing. Bradley Pond store. That's another Baldwin photograph. And probably the area, although the, the people in the place may not be familiar, Bradley Pond is certainly a familiar place to people who... Isn't that up around Line Mountain, uh, Chattagay Lake? Uh, Ellenburg. Ellenburg. Yep. Ellenburg. Yeah, Ellenburg. Hmm. I always confuse the Bradley Pond Road with the Brandy Brook Road, but they both come into Ellenburg Center. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that could be... You know, somewhere in that area. Somewhere in that area. Well, hopefully somebody can help us. Interior of a hotel here had to be in Plattsburgh, but boy, it was questionable. Kind of, kind of swanky with nice Very. pictures on the walls, and it was all decked out for some and special you occasion. Why that's all covered over with uh, material? Or well, maybe it was somebody's wedding. Could be. And maybe this has a special significance for somebody who was watching the program, and that would be nice. <clears throat> I would, we would hope, first of all, to identify the building, right? Mm -hmm. Like we did with all those other photographs. And then maybe to identify the occasion. There's only a few people sitting around, so it's either before or after the event. There is a... It's kind of neat. It's before the event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's before the event, right? It would have been... But see the wooden ceilings? <clears throat> And the wainscoting on the walls, and it's kind of large, so it would be a, you know, if you had your your wonderful magnifying glass, you could even read what the heck that says. Mm -hmm. Not right at this that. moment, <laughs> so you'll just embarrass me because I won't be able to read it. <laughs> now here's a, a hotel called the Berkeley, because we've identified it through the sign, but where is it and where was it? Um, is there a photo uh, maker on the back? Does this not? No. I'm going to look oh, before we do. A little bit there. I don't. It looks like Miss G, Miss B, and I have no oh, idea. Names of people. And it says Berkeley Hotel. This only looks familiar in as much as we did a program on the stereo shots that were taken in the 1800s around Keysville. This almost looked like one of those pictures in my brain. I don't know if that recall, if Calvin remembers anything about that, but it does. And I remember that it was up on a hill and it showed a far shot looking up at it. And I don't know if this would have been around Osable Chasm or Keysville, and I may be, I may be way off. And somebody will surely call us up and set the record straight. A nice building. Most of these pictures uh, probably will be getting calls because I this is so. an unknown farmhouse with people. It has to be a local... Uh, I love it. And a tent in the yard, you might see that kind of thing mm -hmm. this summer, right? This is once again a Baldwin photograph. As the Baldwin Studios were... took a lot of the photographs. Publisher of Adirondacks Sceneries and manufacturer of picture frames, 84 Margaret Street, Plattsburgh, <clears throat> so New York. No doubt it's local. Apparently they were having a get together. All the little kids the on the lawn and the tent out there and the outbuildings. And that's very, very nice. Now, this one here, of course, when uh, Cumberland uh, had, there was a chapel down there called Sun, Sunnyside Cottage. Someone should remember that, maybe. It says Memorial Chapel, Sunnyside Cottage, Cumberland Head. And I'm sure I'm not familiar with The before. vintage would probably be in the 1800s, late 1800s. The dresses, the beards, the mm -hmm. hats. That's one of those photographs that I would love to this pour is, over uh, with the man. Another, it's the interior of that cottage. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our Almost fathers. Looks like a, a campground, camp meeting type. Yeah. Well, you can tell it was the building. It looks like a, an octagon shaped building. You can see the. Mm -hmm. Well, it's got a lot of corners in it. Memorial Chapel, huh? Uh, yes, I'm sure there are those 
viewing today who would know exactly where that was located and now this can help us. I think uh, it was a local baseball team and not very old. The, I'll bet you there are some grandfathers in there that people will call in and say. Uh, it looks like uh, looks like Carling sponsored it. <laughs> it mm. Makes you want to sing the song, Calvin. See Mabel, black label. Maybe what would you say, fifties, Cal? If you had to guess. Yeah, fifties. Uh, I'm wondering the uh, Lion Mountain. I know the the beer company in Lion Mountain. The Carlings Company has sponsored their team for a while. So oh. it could be them. Yeah. And another ball team. And I'm sure that'll be from those faces then will be familiar with lots this of people. This one's called the Athletics. That almost looks like it took place over the fairgrounds, maybe, because that stadium in the back. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure that many people in this that photograph... That one's a little older. I'm sure that many people in this photograph are still living, or certainly their families are, and will help us out a great deal. And if you've got a copies of these photographs with all the people on the team named, or even one or two of them, we sure would appreciate it. Because mm -hmm. other people come in to view these pictures. Well, it's like when we catalog them. It's like you lump them together in a, in a sports uh, box, but you'd like to know who they are. At least one or two. Yep. And here's another one that's even older. I don't know. Oh yeah, the time. this is, this is a, But it's a Plattsburgh team. Plattsburgh double A team double anyway, a. huh? This was uh, Brush Studios, just so you know. This is more typical of the uniforms from the early twentieth century, huh? Yes. The Alcoholics Anonymous team. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> But look at the guy with the monocle. Isn't this cool with the watch? Doesn't it yes. look like he has a monocle? Yes. <clears throat> That's an odd thing at that time. Well, he's got the dog with him. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Great stuff. We could spend a lot of time with each photograph, but there are so many. I just like to get in and get on. I'm not sure. That's a baseball team, uh, PHS or Peru, because of the P on the... the Shirts and the gloves. Also, with my magnifying glass, I see 199 written on the windowsill. That somebody did you really? scratched in. You hope they did it that summer, so mm -hmm. look on the windowsill. Right. Oh my goodness. And I just, I never would have seen that because the glare took it away until I just went yeah, like this. I, uh, 1909. Oh, we're looking for a date of some kind. Found it. Look at the strange looking field mm -hmm. of gloves. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. I don't know how you happen to spot that 1909. Beautiful. This is a view from Brinkerhoff Street over towards the, uh, the uh, Hawkins Hall now, but then was uh, Normal School. Gee, what a nice shot that is, isn't it? Mm hmm. Beautiful. From uh, someone's porch. We don't know, we don't know the year, but we know it was prior to the Great Fire mm -hmm. that we have also mentioned many times here on this program. We may have shown this view, Brinkerhoff from Margaret, 1891, 1894. So interesting because people can read the Press Republican online. Mm -hmm. I get comments, as you know, from many states and countries and a guy from way out west sending me copies a full postcards off eBay of the streets of Plattsburgh. It's amazing. Calvin's very often on eBay looking for old photographs and things from the North Country, and but this guy's sending me photographs from postcards mm. from downtown Plattsburgh that are for sale on eBay. This is George F. Woodward, publishers of Adirondack and Lake Champlain Views in Plattsburgh, New York. We've it's seen dirt, uh, no pavement. And we've seen that sign, J.W. Tuttle, mm -hmm. on the side of that building so many times, right? Mm -hmm. And the printers, the Tuttle Company printers, big sign on the top. That's a 
On a familiar theme, we've seen similar photographs many times. Wonderful. This is 1950 when they were putting the, uh, sorry, Gordy. That's uh, all right. Fence around the monument at Trinity Park. You know, every time I walk through the park, I think of all the significant things that I have attended there, functions that I've broadcast on the radio, things that we've recorded on television, and all the good times from the home of Mr. and Mrs. Walter Bro. Mm -hmm. And look at the old cars from the 30s and 40s, huh? Mm -hmm. It's now great. Now that's the uh, monument. Yep. across from City Hall, so they must have been over on the courthouse side or Margaret Street. We've got a nice Martin house on the there on a, on a tall pole mm -hmm. in the park. That certainly isn't there anymore. And that's that, partic that particular photograph is 55 years old now. And you right. I think about 1950, and that's one of the newer ones that we're showing today. <coughs> oh, boy. Here we are with the Keystone Cops. This is Plattsburgh Cops, 1896. Isn't that beautiful? It Look at the uh, uniforms. One man identified, and I would say probably the forward one. Michael John Michael Wool. Michael John Wool. Here's another. Yeah, oh, boy, that's that's no, this is a larger photo. I wonder if the mustaches were mandatory back in the day. <laughs> those great mustaches. Oh my goodness. Since the Michael John. That's Will. the same guy, right? Mm hmm. So his, he must have descendants, perhaps. Maybe that's where I'm these sure. photographs came from. Maybe his descendants are still living in the area. And if that is the case, we'd love to hear from them. That's great. There are two photos in here from someone's album. Oh, okay. That one is, of course, the normal school. We've shown pictures of it before, but it's nice for people who go by Hawkins Hall or who stop in at the auditorium for one show or another during the year to know what the building looked like previously. And this is an early picture. Of the Vilas home. Of the Vilas home, which has undergone some major changes and renovations, but still has maintained the integrity, the architectural mm -hmm. integrity. They did a beautiful job in adding to the back of it. So that's a good picture. Isn't it nice when people, uh, they just kind of come down and say you can have these photographs or mm -hmm. bring them down and you try to catalog them if you can, right? Right. Oh, oh my goodness. This is neat. This is another 105-year-old uh, photograph. This must, yeah. What does that say on Mrs. it? Mrs. Edith A. Ethan, Barnes Ethan, at Camp Cumberland Head. Yeah, Mrs. Ethan A. Barnes, Cumberland Head, circa 1900. What a beautiful camp. Boy, they'd love to have the vines and the greenery and the flowers and the... Henry Bartlett Lunt, 22 years, age 19-1. Very interesting photograph. There's a whole lot of information about being born on February 1879 in Plattsburgh. Died September 18, 1941, in Toledo. Youngest son of Martha Bartlett Lund and John Henry Lund, who are both buried at Riverside Cemetery in Plattsburgh. The photo was taken 1901, shortly after <laughs> something in, they moved to Toledo, maybe. Mm -hmm. And the rest of it, I'm sorry, I cannot read, but there we have a little bit of... You wonder, are there still family in the area? And possibly there are. That's great. Here's a PHS football team in 19... <clears throat> you know what? We showed this picture before. This is one of my mm -hmm. favorite all-time photographs that we've shown. 
because of all the strange things that you see. This one's identified. 1901. And I'm not sure that I can read the names standing as uh, somebody Stover. Would, does that look like a stoner manager? It looks like stoner. We'll do our best to read these left to right. Upper Lloyd Brannan, mm -hmm. Hartwell Bonesteel, mm -hmm. Charles Clark, Dick Watson, Billy Langloy, dead it says. Yeah. I would imagine they're all right. uh, Laporte, mm -hmm. yeah. Payette, Rick Johnson, Fred Nash, William Dana, mm -hmm. William Rickson, Rickson. Eugene Goff, Goff and Henry Bissett. Henry Bissett. Mm -hmm. That's the crew. And there it is. PHS Ot 1, mm -hmm. as they would say. Right? Ot 1. Right. I love it. Great picture. Great photograph. That's a good put, man. I... Um. These are men obviously belonging to the Masonic Order, based on the logo, and Worshipful Master, is that McElwain? I think it is, mm -hmm. William Howell, Tucker, Clarence, no, no, that Harvey one. perhaps, I can't tell, I'm sorry, Gaudette, Richard, Richard Nichols. Nichols. Harry Thomas, Ben Lewis, Lee Nichols, and Guy Beardsley. He was from Keysville. I really? knew him. Sure. There you go. Mm -hmm. I knew him. Myron Hardy, Glenn Maryhew, if, uh, Leslie. Yeah, you flip it, I probably can pick him out. Richard Walton. Guy Beardsley. Here. You got him. Mm -hmm. Where? Uh, let me just put my finger next to his face. You got him? Right there on the end. Isn't mm -hmm. that great? And you knew him. And you're only 43. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. My friends say I'm older than dirt. Yeah, well. <laughs> uh, early picture of the Weather Old House or Hotel. Yeah, we've I, I don't know why we've shown that or not. We've shown it, but it's a wonderful picture. And this photograph, I believe, is in that Plattsburgh Traction Company book mm -hmm. that we were just and talking about. It's an original, that one. Yeah. Built Hiram D. Witherell, 18th century. I don't think it was built in the 18th century, the 19th century, because mm -hmm. the picture was taken in 1880 and it was probably built in 1867 and it underwent tremendous changes through oh, yes. the years. So when they finally tore it down, or finally went out of business, I have no idea what year, but I'll throw out, uh, I'll throw out 1967. Uh, the reason why we've shown that again is we've got a, a many pictures of the interior and exterior. It was quite grand at one time. And it did change a lot. Even when it closed, mm -hmm. it was a great building. We were sorry to see it go. That would be the lobby probably during that time that we'd just shown. Yep. Maybe maybe I'm fairly close when I say 1967 when they when I, I think so operation. right around that time. Remind people where it was located. Yeah, on Margaret Street in downtown Plattsburgh, it would have been uh, across from Woolworths. Across Woolworths from where somewhere. Arnie's is right now. Well, there's uh, a the, there's a bank there right now, right? The federal building would have is on the right if you were facing oh. west. That would probably have been the interior at that time. That's quite nice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The grill. That's the weather off. Yeah, these a lot of these are, are new photo, completely new photographs for me yes. to see, and that's that's really nice. And my 
fingers are having trouble here. Okay. This is another picture of the same room, but a different view from a different angle. Looked like it was kind of bright. Look at that. Oh, the there was a fountain uh, and the skylight yeah. and the bird cages and the lights and the... Pretty ornate for the time. The west side of the grill room. Mm -hmm. It's got a stamp on the back that says Witherall Hotel Plattsburgh. Mm -hmm. Well, these might have been publicity photographs. I think they were. For marketing purposes. Here's another of the same room, but looking from a different direction. These are... South side. Movies, or uh, photographs we don't handle all that much. They're getting brittle. Yep, I'll be careful. Now, this is a side view when it was in its heyday, like the first picture. Oh, my. Uh, the uh, taxi out front. Oh, that's just so great, isn't it? I've never seen this photograph before, either. These are great. Cause these are all taken in, in downtown Blacksburg. Yeah, Look at all the... How beautiful it was just to the, walk down my street. All the trees and... It was a different time period, wasn't it? Now, this apparently was a prominent family in Plattsburg uh, by the name of... Deliance or Delaire. D apostrophe A L L A I R E. Delaire. Delaire. That's not a that's because a new one on me. We seem to have several of those and of the family. Once again, somebody maybe can give us a little insight on a little insight as to who they are and why we should know who they are. That could have been a father or grandfather of the same family. Well, we seem to have three or four. Kind of distinguished family. anyway. These pictures are meaningful for a lot of reasons because they do. They show a little bit of the history of some of the families in this area. And even mm -hmm. though we're not familiar with not some sure of them. not sure if they from the area or not because they were, photos were taken. Saranac Lake. But we never throw anything. This is away. Grandfather Delaire. No, every every picture is a treasure, isn't it? It sure is. And once again, if people can identify these pictures or have comments on our program, we'd love to have them call Ken Ray. Sure, at five six one zero three four zero. Because if they call me, I'll lose the information before. Sit with me. This uh, I've been there many times, I'm sure you have. Oh, my John Brown's goodness. grave in uh, Lake Placid, Saranac Oh, Lake. my goodness, yes. It looks a little different these days. Mm hmm But a man who's so much tied in with the North Country, the Underground Railroad, Harper's Ferry. Man, that's a very old photograph. It's not dated. But it's a uh, it's Bigelow Studio and we studio. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that too. This the one past. has always baffled me. I've taken it out, looked at it. Where greenhouse and farms, Plattsburgh? Where would that have been? Well, I bet you you're going to. 1929. Find, I bet you're going to find out. There are people around who can tell us. Harry A. Cook's greenhouse and farms. But when it says Plattsburgh, we don't know where. It could you know, be. there there's. Could Absolutely. it be Beekman Town, toward Beekman Town on Route 22? Could it be out That's somewhere no near idea. Peru? Uh, possibilities. But it was quite large. And you'd almost think there'd be remnants of it somewhere in the... Well, we're, we, we see a big smokestack smoke out there. And mm -hmm. Considerable buildings in the in distance. The back, so yeah. it, was, it must have been fairly well known all those years ago. 75, 76 years ago. Oh, what do we got here? You got some really neat portraits. What does that say? William Henry Safford. It's a painting. And Julia Sanborn Safford, his wife. Not Stafford, Safford. Yeah. Uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Austin Oliver. 
Just keeps me going. Wow. Brand, brand Studio, 108 to one and 110 Lake Street. Well, there's your little bit of background. Daughter mm -hmm. of uh, Sally Skinner Sanborn. Sally. There's a little, little like background there. Benjamin anyway. and Sally Skinner. Yep. Mm-hmm. Interesting, interesting, Very. interesting. Named for the fort where his father, what name? Originally, Ozias, worked. Ozias mm -hmm. worked. Father Ozias worked. At the time of his birth, born in Plattsburgh. Mm -hmm. We got a little background there anyway, huh? Terrific. That's part of the same family. They mentioned the Skinners. It says uh, John something Skinner, his wife Julia Louie or Louvi. And those are probably photographs. You think take from photographs or? I think those are photographs. They'd have to be of the 1800s. You know, it's very interesting that some famous people and some not so famous still love to have portraits painted. Even mm -hmm. though we're in a digital age where it's so easy to take great pictures of people, right. painting, still portrait artists are still very popular. Oh, I've seen this picture before, too. This is an old forge at Woods Mills, Woods Falls. There are groups of slides on at the college and elsewhere of many of the old forges in the North Country, but I don't believe I've, I don't know how much of that might be existed at Woods Falls anymore. Great shot. Oh, here we are. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I've seen that actual photograph, but I love it. Take a look at, we're talking about trolleys. What corner is this? Corner of Margaret and says head of Bridge Street. Yeah, the corner of Clinton and Margaret Street. The depot and the fairgrounds. Trolley. And, and behind that, the, I'm sure it says Cliff Haven or Cliff something, mm -hmm. hotel. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. Dirt roads. Oh, that's a nice shot. Shows a lot of good activity, you know. Mm -hmm. This one is very dark. I don't know if it'll show up. Very old picture. Well, you know, we've talked about that schoolhouse in Salmon River. Talked a lot about one-room, two-room schoolhouses in the North Country. Most of us who are anywhere near our age and some even younger can recall going to those one-room, two-room schoolhouses. And every neighborhood had one, didn't they? They sure did, I know. And these <laughs> school marms, and mostly they were females, mm -hmm. who took this job, uh, had a great impact on our lives. That's quite a group. Don't know what year that might have been. But I saw a picture of my kindergarten class. And houses look. around the corner here on Cumberland Avenue. It sits down near the lake. So let's keep off. Mm -hmm. And Edgewater on the other on the other side. Not sure who might live in it now, do you? I don't know. There's some beautiful old buildings and homes along along Cumberland Avenue. This has always been very impressive to drive around here, not only with the Kent Lord House and the mm, September monuments. 1914, Battle of Plattsburgh. Well there you are. We we're just talking about Bunting and the bunting and the parades and the so on. And this is E.G. Moore Company store, right? Mm -hmm. 65 to 71 Bridge Street. 1914. That, so that would be the centennial of the Battle of Plattsburgh. And guess what, folks? We're getting closer. It's 2005 as we record this in April, and 2014 will be the bicentennial. It's Aerial view. 2009 coming first. 2009 though. first, that's right. SUNY. 1958. Oh, interesting aerial photograph. Roads are, uh, streets laid out nice. Taking, taken from the east looking west, an aerial view. I don't believe I've ever seen this before. We have several of them. 
It says Continental Air Views, Inc. North Hempstead Turnpike, East Norwich, New York. April 58. Uh, Teachers College, Plattsburgh. Isn't that a great shot? You can compare to see what what's still around, what buildings are still mm -hmm. around. That, that'd be fun to look at that for a long time and then drive around and see what's there and what's gone. And here's another one from a different point of view. This is the same time, same time period, around April, this time of the yeah, year, 1958. 1958. Before the leaves are on the trees. Boy, those are great shots, aren't they? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Looks like some demolition going on nearby. Oh, I like that. Oh, okay. Hopkins Hall. Again, just a different, little different perspective. That's a nice series of pictures. So as I'm sure many of our viewers have gone to school there, perhaps graduated from that mm -hmm. very school. My wife's mother graduated from the old normal school way back. Mm -hmm. In the early 1900s, that would be Ruger Street, right before the uh, college housing was up. That's the river. Oh, look at that! Now I like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a great shot. Great shot. 1958. April. Mm, yeah, that's good. All the way down to the river, huh? Mm -hmm. Must have put a few balls in the water. Huh? I think you did. They, if you get the real long ball, that looks about 400 feet, doesn't it, down there? This is an aerial view of the uh, 26th Infantry, 1930, presented to the city. Oh, that's kind of neat. in June of 1976, but it goes, this goes back to the 1930s. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an actual photograph, we don't know what it was taken from. I think from that's a, probably a copy of the actual photograph. Yeah, it sure shows a lot about what's going on in downtown Plattsburgh with the bridge and the mm -hmm. monument and, you know, there was far less development around the monument than there is now. City Hall. Dedication of the Plattsburgh Air Base. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. There's familiar faces in there, aren't right. they? Huh? 1964. The other way. This is a little bit better. The dedication of the plaque. December 22nd, 1964. And you have Marjorie Porter. Mm-hmm. Alan Everest, Bernard Stratton, Bob Booth, uh, Robert T. and Robert C., uh, LeClaire Smith, Emily McMaster, Ignatius Lacombe. Mm -hmm. Some pretty high powered names mm -hmm. involved there, huh? Oh my goodness. That's a, uh, that flagpole is, is almost reminiscent of the Civil War flagpole that they raised again on Crab Island, isn't it? It, mm -hmm. looks, it looks a lot like it. Okay. I think he was a merchandiser in the city. Wasn't he graves. just a kind of dapper guy, huh? Mm -hmm. Isn't that a cool picture? Who is it? Frank Graves. Frank H. Graves. I think he had a, a store from various photos and reading I've done here in the city. Yeah, that's a... And he's got the ubiquitous watch fob there and the, mm -hmm. and the bowler hat, the derby, I should say. 
That's kind of cool. This is a family of children in the 1890s. Uh, Alvin Inman and Sisters, I-N-M-A-N. -N. It's a name that I'm familiar with, but I don't know the family. It's just a nice group of kids, huh? Very nice. Alvin, Edna, and Baby Inman. All righty. Gotcha. We even had a musical background there for this a minute. Here's a pretty uh, delicate picture. I'll be careful. And 1916 uh, militia group at the courthouse. Oh, that's a, quite a nice picture, though, isn't it? Huh? Hope we can get a good shot of it. I've seen a lot of old photographs, and we try to identify the time period and try to see. It's fun to look in the windows and see who might be mm -hmm. looking out of the window. So can we interrupt with a, a quick success story here? Sure. Somebody who saw a previous episode... Hey, Marty, what are you doing? I knew you were going to be here. I already mentioned your name a few times How today. How did you, you know. yeah, Sit down. How did you make out? I can't stay. My <gasps> daughter's out there. Oh, car. you did a great job. They copied this over at... Uh, Staples. Staples. That's my son's home. Je she saw this on our show. We know that. She sends me emails. <laughs> now where, where, this one is the one you talked about in the email? Miners in Keysville. They Thank put you. an addition on here, um, which is part of the living room and a bedroom. And then there's on that end is a two-car garage. Do you, do you want to talk of just for one second of this, Janet? Oh, Lord. Yeah, just for one second. Yeah, we were in the kitchen. He's had that running anyway. I know. All right, Janet Downs is here. She brought us a couple of photographs. She told us she was going to, and she just, that was the doorbell. Dee, 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 dee. All right, what is this? It's Miner's Store in Keysville, which is now our son Kevin's home. He was looking for a picture, and you guys, with all your photographs, had one, so they were nice enough to let me copy it. And... You did good That's copy at Staples, huh? And made a couple Staples. of copies mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, and you blew it up. It really... Uh, and yeah. when I remember saying, what the heck is Renews It? At 65 cents, when I looked at that in the window, I still don't know what it is. Do you? It's a cleaning fluid. Yeah, was it was it? a cleaning, cleaning uh, supply. Uh, yeah. Something to... Uh, Cake flour, 26 cents. And, and bleach was, was 16 cents. And by the looks of that, that's not... <laughs> that siding is the old uh, asbestos... Mm -hmm. Asbestos <clears throat> like it, yeah. siding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? This now is a, enclosed in a porch. This window here is enclosed in a porch, and then they put the, an addition on with another big picture window. Hmm. That look familiar? That's your email. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I right. quoted you already in this show. I, oh, my Lord. I said, you know, we're very humble, but she said, great show. That's right. It was great. See that? Our son Kevin. We already read the email, so it's there. perfect that you should yeah. come show here up. today. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. It's fabulous. And we've been doing this all day long, showing old pictures. This mm -hmm. is the seventh edition of these programs with, with Ken, yeah. who has dedicated the last 11 years of his life to being here. Right. It's just. I hope I'm going to have some time that I can volunteer with him. It's well, fun, yeah. yeah. It's great to Ken do. And I go back a long ways. Yes, we worked. To old Champlain Valley Hospital. <laughs> yeah, before we had to move. You know, that's that's your other life. My but other people, life. people, everybody mm -hmm. who years. comments to me, you know, that Ken Ray, such a super guy. I remember when Ken used to work at the hospital. And when oh, I yeah. remember when Ken took fair care of my grandfather. And I remember... One of my dear friends, Mrs. Kortomash. Kate Kortomash is still oh, working yes. at the front desk at uh, CBPH. And she says, even now... People come in and ask for you, she says. <laughs> Say, no, he's in some send old folks' him, home down somewhere. To no. Well, send it, down it, to it was kind of, uh, kind of good to treat everyone like you wanted oh, to be treated. Yeah. And still make it uh, a fun place to work because yeah, it was there was a lot of sadness there. Yeah. So 
lot of sadness, a lot of stress, but you know, mm -hmm. those contacts they can never take away. And now, as we grow older, they come back and they. Mm -hmm. But I can never... remember picking up people for x ray and, and their hair was all mussed up. And I'd say, Don't you have a comb? Yeah, you sit down, I'll comb your hair. I'd fix them up. Sure. And <laughs> Make them look good and off we go. I always work but nights and can arrive at six o'clock in the morning with every a morning, big yeah. smile. To... Yeah, you know I never missed a day. No, nope. stopped at the switchboard never and see what was going on. No, some days I'd pray all the way. <laughs> Faith Lemberton right, sometimes see. would uh, right. be, would stop and ride in with me. It was so bad, and right. it was always easier if you were two people in the car right. because sure. you know yeah. you got through the storm right. better. Yeah, yeah. So. It was fun. Isn't it great? Memories. Yeah. That's Memories. What, that's what this is all about. This is the stack of photographs that we've already been through. Been through. Sixty-eight thousand mm -hmm. well, boxes of photographs that we of have. Those boxes. Yeah. What are you doing today? We're just looking uh, at old pictures. At, they're old, they're yeah. random. Random. All of random a sudden, pictures. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So these you did for you, huh? You just this want to show them to this us? This is a surprise. She came yeah. down and we picked up the uh, the album that we have up there and we found the photo. And this Kevin has been looking for this, so this is. I hope he doesn't see this show. <laughs> oh no! This is Christmas. This, this is Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> this <Not> is Christmas. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> You'll be surprised no, no. to think that you found a, a photo of yeah. what Just, his house used to be. He and never saw that picture before? No. He's I dying love it. to have a picture of this. And we asked Ron Allen if he could find anything in Keysville in the historical stuff there, but we haven't heard from him. And I just, the other night, surfing the TV found you guys with well, photos. Yeah, so when you got to Trombley's, I woke my husband up and said, oh, they're <laughs> doing bar rooms around Keysville and Peru. <laughs> so, yeah, we got all the old drunks on there now. <laughs> right. And uh, I said, wouldn't it be funny if Miner's store was there? And sure enough, there's Miner's store. Uh, if there's anything so, you need to find, document, photograph, just sit and visit. Right. If you don't want to look we'll for anything, anything. Yeah. come to the museum, 3 Cumberland Avenue. That's right. Or become a member, and you even got which I have just done. Yes, that's it. Which I have just done. And five six one zero three four zero. I'll put you on my calendar. I love it. We're so glad you came by today. Well, thanks. Thank you for your friendship, Janet. And and you know this shows our viewers that what we do is real, and that it's meaningful for people. And I love history stuff. And that it's not just some old history stuff. Guys on television showing pictures. It's a connection with, mm -hmm. with right. her life, with your life, with my life, yep. with Calvin's life. It's right. all about hometown. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's you know, we, I talk about it often to my clients. I work as a crime victims advocate. I was talking with um, the major of the New York State Police in this area. And in the old days, you know, when, when many times when you took a job, that was your job for life. <laughs> you stayed there for... 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and retired. Nowadays, people move around all the time. And young people in the state police and in other, in other jobs, they stay there six months, two years, mm -hmm. five years, and they're gone. So they don't have the luxury that we have of taking ownership <clears throat> of the place in which we live. And that's what we're doing here. We're taking mm -hmm. ownership of Plattsburgh and Moores mm -hmm. and Keysville and Shay-Z in Peru, and you know, this is where my grandfather lived. This is where my son Kevin lives. Mm -hmm. This is, mm -hmm. so, that's a good thing. And, that, and it shows one of the great virtues of this kind of television. We find ourselves promoting this kind of television, and we believe there's a, a real niche. And I think Calvin's proved it for the last 20 some years. And lately, people, I think they've discovered this channel because they're channel surfing. And all said. of a sudden, Surfing? right? They see oh these well, photographs, and they stop and they see people they know, and the then all last of a sudden, paper got thrown out. So I didn't know what was on. So I every night around ten o'clock, I flip on see what I can find, and this is what I stumbled onto. So, so now you'll be a regular. I got viewer. on when you were showing the Klondike. That's oh where that's God, where I, yeah. that's where I hit it. <laughs> I saw a picture With of the, the bear, and that was the end of the, it, huh? The snow on the stairs at the oh, Klondike. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah. And I worked here in this home, taking care of Mrs. She Warren. She took care of Mrs. Warren. Sadly. I was, mm -hmm. No, her mom. Her mom, yeah. Her mom, yeah, when she had private duty help around the clock. Oh, I was, my goodness. I worked here. See how yes. everything is connected. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they, they were such good people and they good were. friends, and yes. Sally was, was such a wonderful... Oh, she was a darling. 
wonderful so lady. So was her mom. Her mom was a sweetheart. We had Certainly historical family. Here. Wow. Mm -hmm. It was nice the museum could acquire this home right. from the mm -hmm. uh, family. Yeah. And it, it's too bad it just isn't big, big enough, enough for right. the museum. Yes. But you know what? It served a purpose. Yeah. It serves a purpose right here today because mm -hmm. if it weren't for this place, you'd be having little uh, lemonade yeah. stands yeah, out right. on the street, you know? Right. right. Yep. And so because, moving uh, into that four museum. chimney building out there on the former <laughs> Plattsburgh Air Force Base will be. We'll be dancing in the streets. And the That'd museum operates on such a small budget. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. We, don't even, we don't even give Ken a free lunch here. You know, he's on his own. Free. No, I bring my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> when I eat. Bring right. the bag lunch. Sometimes right. I don't bring any at all. Right. Oh, gosh. Well, Janet, thanks so much for stopping by. Well, you're welcome. This, we, was a, this was a total surprise. We hope we do leave embarrassed you. We'd love to do that at every <laughs> opportunity, especially for our old friends. But you've That's added great. a nice chapter today. Wonderful. Thanks, thanks so much, See guys. See you later, kiddo. Mm -hmm. bye See bye. you again. Have a great bye day. Now. I'm glad the picture turned out great. It turned out well. Mm -hmm. yes. That's thanks good. so much. That's bye great. Now. What else you got bye, there, Janet. young man? That was real nice to have Janet stop in at the most. It was almost like we had this all orchestrated. Janet walks in with the, <laughs> I love it. But you were, you know, first of all, I want to point out that we don't have a staff of thousands here at this Clinton County Historical Museum. In your time, you've extended a great deal of time given to this museum and the history of Clinton County over the years. So it's difficult for you when people do want copies of photographs, but you've discovered that you can make very good Xerox copies. Exactly. We did a previous program, and Calvin said, you, "What? You said you met your wife here?" Quite possibly, and she was only about <laughs> fifteen at the time. I can't remember exactly where, but quite possibly the, the Alexander House is where I first uh, came across my future wife. Yeah, isn't that amazing? And then uh, the guy contacted you and wanted some photographs, and you made copies on the Xerox machine and mm -hmm. they turned out very, very well. Mm -hmm. So you have a, when people call and ask you about these, copying these photographs, first of all, you tell them that you don't have a heck of a lot of time, but you say, if you become a member... Exactly. I'd be more than happy to do it. Because in a sense of the way, that's how we survive, is uh, $5 here, $10 there, or become a member. And... Uh, then have more access to these photos and I've discovered that our copy machine does it very well and from a photostatic copy they can go from there and make the print they want. But whatever a person, you know, we, we like to have responses from people to identify these photographs and if they want copies one way or the other, at least they can call and discuss the situation with you and you'll be honest with yes, them. Yes, because some of the photographs are too fragile even to Xerox and we have to, to uh, be aware of that. Not all pictures are available for copying. And it's possible at some point in time if you can enlarge that staff with volunteers and, and Janet said she'd yes. love to help us. We'll, I mean, we'll corral all kinds of people like Janet Downs who could be I'd a great assistant. I'd be happy to have them. I'd introduce yeah. them to many of the projects that we have going and how they can help us and the community uh, by uh, even logging some of the artifacts that we have here that need logging. Uh, and big move coming up. There will be many things to repack again, and uh, I can show them how we do that. I, you know, we, none of us realized how significant this photograph, photographic collection would be in our series of programs on our little corner until we started doing it. Mm -hmm. As has happened so many times in the past, we're not very good prognosticators looking into the future and mm -hmm. figuring out what's going to be. When you started, I knew I loved them. Galvin knew he loved them. We know we've had great success showing photographs before, but <laughs> here we are weeks and weeks later still doing it with untold photographs in the future. So right. who knows how big a part of the Clinton County Historical Association and Museum this photograph collection will be in the future. I'm guessing it'll be a pretty big part. It's not I the same so. as having an old rifle from the War of 1812, but it is is—it is a piece of history, right. and that's what we're all here for. I think, too, when we move to the uh, airbase, 
maybe we'll get more volunteers. They'll be more, uh, uh, I don't know how to say it, but uh, get volunteers from various senior organizations that would like to come up and spend a couple hours, and we plan to have a room, a workroom just for photographs. I think we ought to have a special presentation given to uh, RSVP, the Retired and Senior Volunteer Program, mm -hmm. who which gives away thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of man and woman hours to organizations, and I'll bet you they would love to spend some time mm -hmm. with and at the Clinton County Historical Museum. Right. You'll have Lake Forest right next to you there. A lot of oh, yes. Mm -hmm. and they're growing and growing all the time. Here's a great photograph. As you said, it's very fragile, but it's a great old photograph of a group of what? Soldiers, soldiers at, the YM at the YMCA. The YMCA, goodness knows, it's first first World War time period, right? So mm -hmm. we're talking about the, the middle teens there. And that is a wonderful shot. That's getting a little long in the tooth, though, that picture. So yeah, I'm very careful when I put it back one. in here. I don't want to bend it if I can avoid it in any way. I'm being careful. Good. Yeah, 1919 in front of the Foquet House down by the railroad station. Notice the road, the highway. The highway. Brick paved highway, 1917, mm -hmm. right? <coughs> yeah, 1917. This is, once again, the very historic part. I love that part of town, because the mm -hmm. D&H is virtually intact. Uh, there'll be a tremendous metamorphosis happening down at the boat launch site where the Juniper was, and where the Naked Turtle Bar is, and where people keep their boats at the marina. And we'll have a, with any luck at all, we'll have a nice convention center down mm -hmm. there, and it'll be, it'll be wonderful because it is, after all, on the shores of our beautiful Lake Champlain. This is a recruitment of the 2nd Division for Clinton County, uh, Court Street, 1916. That would be the First World's War. Uh, just uh, As Calvin takes this picture and freezes it on the screen, I would like to have our viewers just take a look at some of the faces in the crowd. Some, you know, there's anticipation, fear, excitement, consternation. This was a, yes, it's this it's was a very interesting time in our nation's history. And boy, that gives you an example of some folks saying, okay, where do we go next? See, they were required to put a shirt on and a tie if they had mm -hmm. one. And isn't that interesting? Great, great picture in a study. and. Human nature and emotion, I think. Uh, yep. Another group, but uh, facing a different direction, recruits. Apparently they've been accepted. They have all have a uh, marker or banner on them, would you say? Yeah, we saw, you know, I've had similar photographs like this, and we were trying to figure out what they were, and now you've solved whatever mysteries mm -hmm. I had from that these photographs you, you've been right, accepted. right in front of the courthouse. 1916 and the banner, somebody else explained what I that banner that was. in uh, one of our uh, storage areas in the back there are some banners that say really? you, you've been accepted. And we see their suitcases mm -hmm. and we see the, the great old slivers and other cars in the background. This is that this same is. photo. That's good to have this series of photographs, mm -hmm. isn't it? There are more recruitment in a different part of the street, downtown Plattsburgh. Well, you know, you can see the the flag was, there was a flag there waving and mm -hmm. furling, so it kind of blurred in the picture, but at least you get it. First Division, 1916. Going off to war. Makes you want to hum the strains of, it's a long way to Tipperary. You know, all those great World War I songs that all my old uncles used to sing to me as a little kid. 
Union soldier, unidentified, oh. oh. but that's a great photo. Oh. I love it. Just have a look at this great beard. Is that a classic photograph or what? And he's the kind of guy that I would love to see identified to know if any of his that would be descendants are still Civil existing. War. They would be the Civil War, no question about it. And if it comes from this area, it would no doubt be somebody from this area. This time period was also so significant in the growth of Plattsburgh. Right. Post Civil War era up around an area which we now know as we now know as Fox Hill and so mm -hmm. on. Where the returning soldiers were given pieces of land along It's probably a uh, paper manufacturing probably was Route Nine North. Uh, maybe. Well, this could be down around where the mill is located. I would the paper mill now, maybe. Yeah. 1950. Note the paper napkins that they have decorated with. Oh, that they made with. the float out of. They made the float with paper napkins. You would certainly notice that, but I, I yeah. didn't notice what that was. Mm -hmm. Once again, paper manufacturing demonstration. And, you know, people... 1950, there are people on the vehicle. Maybe there, someone recognizes them and... Uh... Oh, boy. Remember when you go in the store, there was always a roll of butcher's paper? And oh, yes. Almost anything you got was wrapped up in butcher's paper. Mm -hmm. Remember that? A great memories. George Hawkins, Hawkins Hall today. Well... It's a nice portrait. Nice picture. 1930. He was George Hawkins, as Ken said, for whom Hawkins Hall is located, I mean named, was the principal of the Plattsburgh State Normal School, mm -hmm. PSNS, as it was called back in those days. Great portrait. We wow, have this one is carefully, oh, because it's a tintype. Unidentified tintype. Isn't that neat? Isn't that neat? And once again, we have no idea who this is. We don't even know where it came from, as a matter no. of fact, do we, huh? Well, these tin types and derogatypes and great pieces of his, there's almost something written down there and we can't quite tell. Looks like 1770. No, that's, that's certainly not accurate. Uh, a great picture, though. Mm -hmm. Wow. We're sorry for the descendants of those wonderful people that we don't have a clue as to but who they might be. But it shows that we don't uh, destroy anything. We're getting down to the bottom of the pile and getting oh, down to the a, end of our... A reproduction of the Battle of Plattsburgh. Well, uh, it's a this, good is, this is a picture that we it bears showing here for a very good reason. It's a huge, it, this is what the painting that people think about. We have that painting here. When they see the victory on Lake Champlain by B. Tanner, it was done only uh, a couple of years after the, after the battle. And even though we now know there were certain inaccuracies in the, in the painting, he, did, he worked the best way he could two years after it was over. Oh, I like that one, too. Mm -hmm. Wow. Look at this. There's more. It, it's... <laughs> see where it comes from? Ellenberg Depot, yeah. It, it's only legend is that it's a farm wagon with a team of horses. Six horses. It must have been hauling quite a load, huh? And there's a school, I think, there, or a church. It looks more like a school, maybe. I the bell on the on the yeah. Cable. I wonder. Well, there's something written here, and it says Mrs. George Sheldon. She there were Sheldons up there, sure. And what is that? Is that a name of a place somewhere? Looks like Nihaka. Nihaka Nils. Nils or Nibs? 
yeah. Almost. If that means something that doesn't to me. <clears throat> That's a great shot. One of those wide angle shots with two, two, four, six, eight horses. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just don't know. You got another one? Uh, not from there, but I do have a few of the state police from the 1900s when they had the Black Horse Patrol. You know, it's very interesting because I was just meeting a young gentleman from New Hampshire. And I'm kind when I say young gentleman, although he's much younger than I am. He's fresh out of a 28-year career with the New York, with the state police in New Hampshire and He's had various other jobs, but he works as a polygraph expert now, mm -hmm. going around different locations. And he's such a nice gentleman. And I was talking about the history of the New York State Police. And my friend Bill Bush, who's about to retire as a New York State Trooper, his dad used to tell the greatest stories of the horse patrol mm -hmm. and how they would stop in the, the post office once a week or whatever it was to pick up their assignments and how they couldn't be married. And we did a little piece on the history of the New York State Police at Raybrook <coughs> one time, and it was far different from the way things are done now. This will have to be the last picture of the day for us. And we'll whet their appetites because you have many more New oh York my, State Police yeah. pictures to show. Yes. We'll use this as our as our last image to burn on people's minds because we're talking 1917. Mm -hmm. The names are there, Robinson and Lacord, maybe? Could be. Um, it's not repeated in the back, so it could be. Mm -hmm. But aren't they great, huh? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. You have, you know, the best thing about a historical museum is that it gets a variety of things. We have a touch of everything, in a sense of the way. And, and these, think people uh, thought they were through with the pictures when we showed them the liquor boards? No. We saw other boxes over there and we said, what's that? And you said, oh, just check that out. Well, those drawers are full <laughs> of huge ones. <laughs> Calvin's going to run out of tape before we run out of time, I'll tell you that. It's a, and we got a stack of things for the next time. Of, uh, is that all state police? Uh, about a third, two-thirds of them. From, uh, yeah. Postal carriers. Uh, 1917, 1920. Uh, Dock and mm -hmm. coal. I have. Customs, much. house, postal care. Oh, listen to this. Mm -hmm. We're going to have so much. Groundbreaking for the new post office in 1963. Post office in 1910. Oh. Ken Ray, I got to tell you, this is this is the highlight of my week. Every time I get a chance to come down and, and speak with you for a short time. And I hope we can reflect our enthusiasm for history onto the onto the tape and the cameras and, and, and encourage North Country people to get involved in the history of their neighborhoods, to check the genealogy of their families, so we can tie this whole thing together. Because as I've said a thousand times before, our, our future depends on knowing the, about the past. True. You've enjoyed the, your uh, tenure here. Oh my, yeah, every day. It's a learning experience. And it's a, it's a good place to come and spend time because uh, I think even if they opened one of the photographic uh, books, they would be here for the rest of the day. Because you look at this, you want to see more, you want to see more. I'm a fan of talk radio. I'm a fan of what makes people tick, why they do what they do. Mm -hmm. And if I've learned nothing else in my long lifetime, it's that the more you can stay active with your mind and your body, exactly. the better off you're going to be. And we see pe I see people still going to work as executives and corporations at 84, 85, oh, sure. 86 years of age. <laughs> I see international diplomats who are still studying world history now in their 90s. And I heard an interview with a person on, on public radio the other day who was almost 100 who was just as interested in what's happening today and what will happen oh, sure. tomorrow as he was 75, 80 years ago when he began. I don't watch much <clears throat> TV, but when I do, I watch all the news channels. I switch from one to the other and spend the entire evening 
knowing what's going on in the world in my own community. I don't know why I do it, but I'm just drawn to it. it seems Some of like us I want to know that. We're just what's so curious. happening and where. You're like I am. You're nosy. Mm -hmm. You want to know what's going yeah, on in the world, right. in the neighborhood, in the world. Yeah, a lot of people tell me, well, are you going to work down there forever? And I said, no, only till I'm 100. Then I'm taking a trip to New York and have a photo taken for the Smucker's Jar. I love it. So I then <laughs> got on the Weather Channel. <laughs> You're beautiful. <laughs> Ken Ray, thank you so much for being with us and for inviting us into your life and your Clinton County Historical Museum. Again, our little pitch. Your phone number is? It's 561-0340. Give us a <laughs> ring. We'll look up the pictures you like, and if I can Xerox it and it's of good quality, can make you a copy and you can become a member. And you can become a member and take some ownership into and take the history of the great right. North Country. Not even that. I'll share my cookies over there. Oh. There's a stack of them. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Please, thank you so much for your comments. Thank you so much for watching this program and supporting what Calvin and I do because all of us in this room really, really believe in what we're doing. And who knows? Where, unless we're here, who right. knows where we're going to be next time for our little corner.